Today, I'll finally get to talk about everyone's favorite oh God, please step on me. waifu, Avera Rosen, debuting with the upcoming Grand Blue update. Also, I may or may not have a problem. And if you don't want to miss future PGA or Guides and videos, don't forget to subscribe, and if I make any corrections or forget to mention something, it will be in the pinned comment down below. Okay, let's jump into it. Vera Rosen is a base A rank support structure that deals primarily dark damage and features healing as well as dark damage buffs for your team. In this video, we'll cover Vera's skills, passives, playstyle, I'll cover her weapons, builds, team synergies, and my poll and build recommendations. I'll also add timestamps if you want to jump to a specific topic. Going over her kit, her basic attacks deal physical damage and melee range, and you can also skip to the end of the attack string after dodging, kinda like alpha. Her QTE is kinda like Alo's QTE, it deals AoE dark damage on cast, and it gives allies increased dark damage and heals them based on Vera's attack stat. Her ultimate deals an initial burst of dark damage to all enemies in its radius. Then Vera deploys a field that follows her, dealing AoE dark damage every second. It also gives active allies inside of it increased movement speed, increased dark damage, and healing based on Vera's attack. Her core passive is once again indicated with the sword gauge at the bottom of the screen. It fills up naturally over time, and performing multiple of the same color pings will also add to the gauge. Basically, spamming through or pings will fill it up the fastest. And when the gauge is full, Vera can literally perform a starburst stream by holding her basic attack and then spamming it to perform ranged sword slashes at enemies in front of her, dealing AoE dark damage. And each slash also refunds a chunk of energy for her ultimate. As for her orbs, her red orb is a series of melee slashes that deals physical damage to enemies in an AoE, and this deals dark damage instead if it's a 3 orb ping. Her final slash also pulls in enemies towards her, and this is also her swap and attack. Her yellow orb launches a sword wave dealing dark damage and lunges her forward while performing a flurry of sword slashes dealing physical damage. The slashes deal dark damage instead if it's a 3 orb ping. Her blue orb is a cross slash that deals physical damage to an enemy in front, and again if it's a 3 orb ping, it deals dark damage instead. It also marks an enemy, dealing AoE dark damage every second, and heals allies based on Vera's attack. As for her leader passive, she gives the team 5% increased health and healing bonus, and as for ascensions, at S rank, she can level up her class skill for increased healing, at double S, she gains an additional 5% attack for each sword slash from her core passive. At triple S, Vera's dark damage bonuses in her QTE and ultimate are increased to 20% instead of the base 10%, and at triple S plus, her ultimate lasts 4 seconds longer. As for her playstyle, she's played as a sub DPS support that provides healing and deals burst dark damage through her core passive. The game plan here is simple, build the sword gauge with 3 orb and matrix pings, and when the gauge is full, hold the basic attack and then spam the basic attack to empty the gauge. Use Vera's ultimate whenever it's up, and swap out of Vera when 3 orb pings and the sword gauge are depleted. If you own both Tenebrion and Astral, Vera's on-field time will be mainly spamming 3 orb pings to fill up a sword gauge, popping her core passive to deal the burst dark damage, and then quickly swapping out. If you just own Astral and run a 4-piece Da Vinci tank like Isla, Beanonomy, or Call Me Bastion, Vera will be more of a pseudo DPS when Astral has his orb downtime, so she'll stay on the field a little bit longer. And before someone asks, no, she will not outdamage Astral as a primary dark damage dealer, she has a healing support class skill unlike attackers like Astro with a damage bonus class skill. And some things to note, remember to always 3 or ping if you can for the dark damage conversion, and also note that you cannot move while performing your core passive attacks and you must dodge to end a core passive state early. And as for the weapon choices, 4 star weapon is kinda scuffed especially since Vera's healing skills have attack, so a 5 star weapon is highly recommended for free to play. And for light spenders or those lucky enough to pull Crimson Burst for Plume or Sakura for Alpha, Vera could borrow them as a stat stick and they're her best in slot outside of her signature weapon, which is the Serial, which isn't really worth unless you often breach your wallet. And as for builds, depending on your dark team comp, she's built as either a QTE support or pseudo DPS or as a pure QTE debuffer. And you will need to fully invest in her kit unless she's a pure QTE debuffer, in which case a class skill in QTE is enough. You will need at least an S rank, but more is better depending on how much you value her damage. For 5 star memories, you can run 4 piece Samantha and 2 piece Gloria for heals, or 4 piece Ike and 2 piece Gloria for damage. And as for 6 star memories, you have both Astral and Tenebron, should be the new 4 piece Da Vinci holder for the Dark Team, replacing A Karenina in Warzone and A Liv in Pain Gauge. And as for the 2 set, 2 piece Guinevere is the go to for healing and elemental buffs, and you don't need to resonate Da Vinci right now. But, if you only own Astro and don't own Tenebrion, since Vera can deal decent dark damage, she'll be the pseudo dark DPS for the team. Ayla, Beanonomy, or Call Me Bastion will be holding 4 piece Da Vinci and 2 piece Gloria. Vera's memories will consist of 4 piece Bathalon and 2 pieces of either Caudi to keep the ultimate up, Einstein for the Dark Shred if Astro isn't running it, Darwin or Frederick for damage, and Guinevere for additional healing and buffs. Bathalon is preferred in the bottom row for the most part, and the ideal resonance here is attack on the top row and core passive on the bottom row. 
You can also run a QTE debuff build where you run 2-piece Guinevere, 2-piece Einstein, and either 2-piece Samantha or 2-piece Gloria. Note that these builds will vary based on what you're running on your other characters, and remember that you cannot stack the same set bonus debuffs. You can also farm many of these memories in the new upcoming update. As for team comps, she's a staple in dark teams, so for Pancage and Warzone, you'll now run Astro on red, Vera on yellow or blue, and Tenebrion or any other tank like Bastion, b Anonymy, Isla, or even a Karen on the leftover slot. And you will want Tenebrion as the leader ideally so that Astro can swap an attack and red orb for the core passive, but Astro's leader passive is still better than the other tanks or Vera's for a dark team if you don't have Tenebrion. And as for my polar build recommendations, she can easily be pulled at her 100% rate up debut banner if you save enough R&D tickets from bounties, but there's no event shop next update, so you will need to farm interlude to bring her to at least S rank or pull another copy. And come on, she looks like Kurisu. But yeah, very good pull, and highly recommend it to build. If there's any updates or corrections, I'll leave in a pinned comment down below. If you have any questions, drop in the comments, I do try to respond to them, or join the discord at discord.io slash aljanautomata. I'll usually respond there if I'm not busy. Subscribe so you don't miss future PGR guides and videos, and if you found this video informative, drop a like, a dislike if you didn't. Sorry for the late upload, I decided to try to get some rest and work on other projects during the break before uni starts up again, but damn, 2021 just flew by, and I want to thank everyone for supporting me so far. Anyways, this is from me, stay safe, and I'll catch y'all in the next video. Peace late.